on America Tonight, 9 Eastern, only on Al Jazeera America. What if you could slow the aging process? A UCLA professor says he found an internal body clock, thanks to DNA, that tracks the biological age of our body's tissues and organs. Researchers say there are some that age quicker or slower than others, and that discovery could unlock secrets that could help you young. It could help keep you young. It could also help target diseases that come in old age. So what can this mean for potential cures and what are the ethics involved? Dr. Steve Horvath is the scientist who met He's a professor of human genetics and biostatistics at UCLA. He joins us from Los Angeles. And Dr. Art Kaplan is a bioethicist. He joins us here in the studio. He is the head of the NYU Langone Medical Center's Medical Ethics Division. Doctors, thank you both for being with us tonight. Thank Dr. You. Harvath, I want to start with you. Uh, you've spoken about a fountain of youth, or people have spoken about a fountain of youth since Ponce de Leon went searching in Florida exactly five centuries ago this year. We know you studied 8,000 samples of of more than four dozen healthy and cancerous cells and tissues. Uh, give us a shot in layman's terms here. What exactly did you find? Well, I found a novel biological clock that allows one to estimate the ages of many tissues and cell types and organs in the human body. And this uh, new aging clock is based on uh, certain markers on the DNA. And um, by averaging the, uh, these 353 markers, um, one can arrive at a highly accurate um, estimate of human age. So you can actually see what the DNA, what age the DNA should have, and you could see whether some were older and some were younger. Yes, exactly. Um, th this is, of course, a very interesting application to um, estimate the age of various different regions from the same um, individual and then identify certain tissues or organs that either look substantially older or substantially younger than expected based on their chronological age. And I want to talk about what you found that was older and younger, but I also want to talk about a very important thing that you found, that there was a way of resetting adult cells into what you call pluripotent stem cells, so that yes. in effect you can turn back the clock on those cells. and potential does that hold for anti-aging? Yes, um, before I explain it, I need to make sure that um, I clarify that I have not found a way to rejuvenate uh, tissues. <laughs> uh, we are far from that. But um, what I have found is that um, a procedure that is routinely used to turn um, mature cells into almost embryonic cells, these so-called induced pluripotent stem cells, that this procedure resets this aging clock to, on, uh, to zero. And um, in other words, it resets um, the, the age of the adult tissue back to an almost embryonic state. Dr. Kaplan, there has been a lot of study of stem cells as part of possible anti-aging uh, cures. Do they bring up any ethical issues for you? Oh, enormous ethical issues. But let me say, this discovery, the ability to sort of see what the biological clock is, organ by organ, tissue by tissue, demonstrating that, in fact, our bodies age at different rates inside our cells, that's really important. I know some viewers may be saying, well, if you can't reset my clock, what do I care? Call me up, you know, when, <laughs> when you I can, can be rejuvenated. But <laughs> this is major stuff because it allows us to say, hey, maybe you're going to need an organ transplant if your liver is aging particularly rapidly or if a cancer is near tissue and that looks abnormally older. Uh, this is a, Dr. Horvath has got a great breakthrough here. Oh, Stem cells you. are uh, very, very exciting. We don't know how to do this rejuvenation with them yet. We're trying to do research with them. But probably the biggest question they raise is, if you could rejuvenate, you have to be thinking, look, it better be my entire cell system because you don't want to be in situations where your body's Part rejuvenated and your head is not or right. your brain is <laughs> lagging and your liver is good. That's probably the biggest challenge is figuring 
change everything. And inevitably, when things like this come up, people always say, well, should we be doing this? Yes. Are we playing God? Well, you know, you do hear that. And I have to say, in a world in which modern medicine replaces organs, and most of us are familiar with artificial hips, some of us have, like Dick Cheney, an artificial heart, a partial one, we've answered the question. We're going to change the world around us. We're not going to be limited by, if you will, the way nature is. I think there's still questions, should we do certain things, should we not do other things because they cost too much. But the general idea that we shouldn't try to improve, change, or even alter our lifespan, I don't see the argument. Well, Dr. Horvath, let's talk some more about what you found. And again, we were talking about how certain things seem to age at different speeds. What is aging too quickly and what is staying younger? Yes, before I directly answer that, let me mention that the exciting aspect of this aging clock is that most um, tissues have the same age um, as expected. However, um, I found evidence that uh, two tissues um, showed a discrepancy. So uh, human heart tissue appears to be substantially younger than expected. For example, the heart of a 50-year-old man could be 10 years younger than expected. And um, similarly, I found evidence that uh, female breast tissue appears several years older than expected. Why? I really don't know. And um, this is clearly a very exciting question because if we understand what ages these tissues or what prevents aging, then we are a step closer towards understanding why we age. And, but, and one um, of the things that yeah, I think yeah. you raised in, 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 in one article is the whole issue of chronological aging versus biological aging of an human being, referring to going to your high school reunion and you're seeing uh, people who are, look 10 years older than the average and others that look 10 years younger. Could it be because that those people who have uh, those older looks, it's because their DNA is terrible? Well, it could be, but I would think that it has a lot to do with lifestyle decisions. <laughs> Exercising and diet have, of course, a major effect. But um, maybe, maybe uh, some cosmetics too. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> a little surgery. Or no surgery. <laughs> but could but, it be uh, partially DNA? Yes, it could be, but I expect the effect is rather small, and what we really need is uh, large um, studies, large cohort studies to investigate whether we can detect an effect um, between accelerated aging on the one hand and, for example, age-related diseases and um, other age-related complications. You have looked, uh, Dr. Kaplan, at anti-aging efforts in mm -hmm. the past from an ethical standpoint. Where do you think we're going to go over the next 10, 20 years? You know, there's really two interesting questions about anti-aging. One is, can we get everybody to live what we would now consider a normal lifespan, say make it to 90? A lot of us don't. Maybe technologies like this one will start to open the door so that more of us can live to an older age. Then there's life extension. What can we do maybe to reset the clock, live to 110, 120? I think the big ethical problem is going to turn out to be where do you put your chips? Are you going to try and let more people all around the world live to a full lifespan? Or are you going to say, well, if you're rich enough or in a privileged society, maybe you'll get the life extension. I Difficult think choices going... about where to put the resources. Exactly. And I think that's going to be a big battle in the years to come as this technology, like we're hearing about tonight, begins to improve. We have a viewer question. Let's go to Hermela for that. Thanks. Viewer Stuart, Stuart wants to know, does this research have any implications on degenerative illnesses like Alzheimer's? Well, that it would be wonderful if we could find a relationship between um, age acceleration in brain tissue, for example, and um, um, Alzheimer's disease status. But unfortunately, I don't have any data that would support this claim. But of course, I hope that many of my colleagues um, um, will look at that, because these kind of data are already out there. And um, I distribute a freely available software on my web page, so it, it should be very straightforward to address these questions. One fun thing you bring up is that there are actually mm -hmm. are potential implications from your research to fight crime. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, many people um, 
has suggested to me that um, this um, age predictor could be used to, uh, for forensic applications. For example, if um, blood is left on a crime scene, one could um, apply these age predictors to at least um, estimate the range of um, the age of the perpetrator.